Transportation well, Secretary Pete Buttigieg is facing some pretty harsh criticism, bipartisan criticism, over how he is handling the meltdown at Southwest Airlines. Even some Democrats say he could have done more to prevent the mass cancellations that snarled holiday travel and left thousands of Americans stranded coast to coast. Let's bring in our panel, Kevin Walling, former Biden campaign surrogate and the vice president of HG Creative, and Colin Reed, former spokesperson for Governor Chris Christie and former campaign manager for Senator Scott Brown. Gentlemen, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, all right, so first off, I never quite understood what level of expertise uh, Pete Buttigieg brought to the table when it came to transportation. So I'm not exactly shocked or surprised at his lack of experience is backfiring. But Colin, all the tens of thousands of travelers wanted was to get home and get reimbursed. Very simple. But Buttigieg hasn't even levied any charges against any of these large airlines for canceling flights, failing to reimburse customers. Why is that? Yeah, a tough week for all involved, Julie. Uh, obviously, Southwest Airlines is going to have to answer for this this uh, catastrophe, as is uh, Secretary Buttigieg. And again, this is one of those issues that isn't like a tax return you, you had trouble fi filling out. This is your family couldn't get home for Christmas. So it's deeply personal. It's one of those things that's going to uh, stick with him for a while. But politically speaking, the, Pete, Pete Buttigieg has two problems. One, this is a part of a pattern. Uh, when the railways were having their strike issues over in the fall, he was, he was caught vacationing in Europe. Uh, of course, the supply chain crisis unfolded on his watch. And two, this is one that's going to, the deepest cuts are going to come from the Democratic Party. Uh, Republicans, a lot of conservatives might say, you know what, let the free market sort this out. If you don't like Southwest Airlines, go fly a different airline. This isn't the government's job to sort all this, all these, all these problems out. But that is not the attitude of today's Democratic Party, of which Pete Buttigieg wants someday to be a leader in. And uh, if these cabinet positions are supposed to be stepping stones to higher office, uh, this one for him has become more like a lead balloon. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, a congressman, Ro Khanna, a Democrat from California, is putting the fire under Buttigieg's feet. He tweets this. Nearly six months ago, Bernie Sanders and I called for Buttigieg to implement fines and penalties on airlines for canceling flights. Why were these recommendations not followed? This mess with Southwest could have been avoided. We need bold action. Would you agree B Buttigieg has dropped the ball? Well, Julie, certainly there's more questions than answers in this uh, week of a disaster for Southwest Airlines. I'll note the Department of Transportation has already leveled uh, millions of dollars in fines uh, previous to the holiday season, secured $600 million in reimbursements. That's under Pete Buttigieg's leadership. Uh, but certainly you're going to see Congress, I think, in a, a Republican majority in the House, a Democratic majority in the Senate, call the Southwest uh, Airlines leadership before Congress. Uh, certainly there's also questions about the $50 billion that the American taxpayers gave to the airline industry, including $7 billion for Southwest. The vast majority of that was used for stock buybacks and not actually mm -hmm. improving their operational uh, conditions uh, heading into this holiday season. The, the writing was on the wall, and I think also Secretary Buttigieg will be called before Congress to answer on that front as well. Yeah, there's a lot of questions that need to be answered from Southwest Buttigieg and beyond. But I want to, real quick before I let you guys go, you know, Biden is obviously considering if and when to launch his re-election bid. Uh, there are reports that say that Democrats are actually quietly urging the president to delay any announcement, possibly expecting that the investigations are going to pursue in January. They want to see how that poll plays out. But let me show you this poll uh, that shows that Americans don't want him to run again and prefer a presidential candidate that's 20 years younger than the current 80-year-old president. A USA Today Suffolk University poll asks, how old should the president be? Uh, 50 percent, not half, say 51 to 65, 8 percent have him at President Biden's age, 35 to 50 years old, 25%. Um, I'm gonna go with you, uh, Colin, and then Kevin, if you could just give me your quick reaction to that. Yeah, it's the end of the year, Julie, and it's a year of reflection, the time to look back. Obviously, 2022 did not go the way a lot of Republicans wanted, uh, but the silver lining may be that we're running against President Biden again in 2024. And shame on us if we can't do a better job than we did in 2022. Uh, I remember working for Senator McCain 12, 14 years ago when he faced a lot of questions about his age when he was 70 years old. President Biden's 10 years older, and these are questions whether he and his team like it, he's going to have to answer and continually answer for uh, throughout the years ahead. Kevin, do you see age being a problem for the president if he chooses to rerun? 
Well, certainly, Julie, the American people will decide that. I was just with the president just two weeks ago at the White House. I think he's fired up to run for re-election. Uh, Rich just noted the incredible number of judicial appointments the president uh, has secured, a huge legislative uh, record over these last two years, including a lot of bipartisan victories. So I think uh, any uh, Republican uh, would uh, be, uh, you know, uh, seriously uh, 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 in question taking on this president with that kind of record. All right. We'll wait and see. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Walling and Colin Reed, thank you both for talking to us. Appreciate it. Happy New Year. Julie, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You too. Great. Julia, Fox News.